evening. We speak the great, awesome, marvelous, splendid virtue. Many of us do not use this virtue enough. I also believe many of us do not value this virtue. It is very sad. I was told by someone that rights are like a muscle. You don't use them, they go away. This is very true. This is why we must use our rights. This organization is a great beacon of free speech. We are here to use free speech the way it is intended to be used. We are not taking it for granted. We are using it in a constructive, productive, positive way. We are fortunate to have free speech. That is why it is imperative to use it. Certainly we can look around the world to see others who lack it. I believe free speech is probably the most important of the rights guaranteed in the Constitution. Especially since I am a very expressive person. I cannot imagine being suppressed. I cannot imagine living a life where key essence of myself is denied. Some people are not very expressive, thus they don't care that much about free speech. That's sad. I remember once when I was younger, my family and I went to Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. quite interested in three booth tables displays that were set up on the lawn across from the White House. One woman said she was sitting there until the U.S. does away with all its nuclear weapons. As noble as the cause is, I think she's going to be sitting there a long time. Another booth was similar. The third booth was, a, was of a much different nature. There was a man who linked his white separationist views to Nordic, Celtic, pagan type religion. Grabbed a pamphlet, it was quite interesting. It displays up with his swastikas. One man, by my father, uttered the phrase, Isn't freedom of speech great? What? He was sarcastically denouncing freedom of speech because This man used it in a way he didn't like. Certainly, I'd rather have him be allowed to do that than have no free speech at all. Earlier this summer, I was talking to a friend of mine about hate speech. He believes hate speech should be there. I don't. I've heard good arguments to suggest we should. One argument I've heard is the idea if you suppress it, it will only get worse. Advocates of this argument suggest suppressing free speech is similar to suppressing sex or anything else that's natural to one's self. Also, these advocates suggest 
it is better far to allow these views we don't like to surface so we can address them rather than having them pop up the burden. I've heard this referred to in an immune type way where our society, the body, can inoculate itself against the greater harm by having just a little bit there. In principle, I'm against doing away with hate speech. By law, I believe they certainly should have the right. Of course, I'm not agreeing with what they're saying. It's virtuous to allow them those rights. Some people say, very truthfully, if you take away their rights, it will be that much easier to take away yours. I believe people are on to something when they're thinking this way. It was interesting how the writers describe sympathy given towards Randy Weaver during his Ruby Ridge ordeal. What was my blood to think about what happened there? It's interesting, the writers point out, how this man who has views of society finds abhorrent is able to acquire all this sympathy. Could it be because people deep down inside realize Randy Weaver could just be one more step to take away rights from us? Think it's possible? Along with freedom of speech comes freedom of the press. When I was young, I came across an excellent book called Pirate Radio Stations Tuning Into Underground Stations. book about particular subcults, particular terms in America. But it was very influential because not only was I, I still am very interested in pirate radio of its own, it also opened my mind to broader social and political issues. free speech, free press issue was parallel. The author in this book described how the Federal Communications Commission systematically denies people their rights to freedom of press by striking down those who operate a radio without a license. The argument is, why should you have a license when there's freedom of of press. One better radio station called Radio Free America says a government, our government calls those who exercise their freedom of the press pirates. How ironic. That commentator is incredibly right. This is why I felt compelled to act. Ham radio is similar in the sense you need a license to for free speech. 
I was against it. Thus, I bought a ham radio and said I was going to operate. Because I wanted to operate, it was thrilling also to protest the Federal Communications Commission. I am proud of the fact that I did. I was tracked down by some ham radio operators who apparently had nothing better to do. Why don't they track down drug dealers like Joseph Flicker who sells their poison right by a park where little children roll their balls, play catch. Why don't they go after the abortion doctors? Because they suck in that way. It's very rebellious to eat at me. I was glad because I stood up for what is right. Stood up for free speech, free press. When I was a sophomore in college, I decided to get myself a radio show on our campus radio station. It was called Creative Art. The point was to read poetry, read other pieces of art created by me. They also wanted others to go into the show too. Sadly, the show only lasted two airings. This was largely because I was too controversial for them. Mainly, one poem I read the second show. It was called I Hate the FCC, a poem written by myself. Middle of the poem, they pulled me off. They yelled at me. They were too afraid of the repercussions from the Federal Communications Commission. I wrote a letter to the editor telling them, old campus, I think I made my point. The fact I am unable to air anti-Federal Communications Commission home on the air is proof positive the Federal Communications Commission suppresses free speech is proof positive, will not allow people to criticize it. Indirectly, they were afraid of repercussions. I told the one worker, I asked you if there was anything I could say. All she said was a couple of swear words. Then she said, I didn't know you were going to read anti-FCC polls. It's interesting to be censored. Quite interesting. I recommend doing away with the FCC because they inhibit that blessed right of freedom of speech, of freedom of press. The old belief we must fight for our rights is incredibly true. I was willing to operate a ham radio. I was willing to make that statement on the radio. Another way my freedom of speech was suppressed. Earlier this year, I protested Joseph Ligger. I was arrested for it. Brought to trial. Fortunately, I was acquitted. Justice was obtained in the fact I was acquitted. Of course, there's injustice. I was arrested. Tried at all. That's a way to silence you. Of course, they're not going to say 
You can't be here. You can't express your opinion. They're more slick than that. They'll find a loophole. They have to have one. Fortunately, it was groundless. Somebody said, I called someone a feed off all baby. Therefore, they had this harassment, alleged harassment, they could stick disorderly conduct on. Rights are great. Sadly, a lot of police officers find ways to get around them, find ways of circumventing your rights. They find some technicality to prevent your rights. This reminds me of another time when I was protesting at the tobacco shop. The police officers gave their phony line about, We want to... We don't want to violate your First Amendment rights. But they said, I couldn't be there because I had a swear word on there. They were afraid a minor would come by and see the swear word. It appeared to me they were looking for something to get me to stop. These losers, if they defend the drug dealers at the tobacco shop, they're losers. Just as the police officers defended even worse drug dealers of Joseph's liquor are even worse losers. It, it would appear to me a lot of police officers would rather we just scrap the whole bill of rights. Makes their job so difficult. They can't just arrest whoever they want. They can't bust into your house all hours whenever they want. What an inconvenience. They can't arrest those who try to speak out against drug dealers. What a pain. That is why I defended myself, did not lay down, take the fine, because it was wrong. I stood up in court for what is right. I won. That is the cost of freedom of speech. Someone said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. This is the attitude our founders had. The great slogan, don't tread on me, which flag hangs in my window, drove them. They realized you cannot just sit content. If you want your rights, you're going to have to be an action individual. You're going to have to say, stupid police officers, don't tread on me. They may not like it. They probably won't like it. Too bad. This is America. If these police officers don't like the Bill of Rights, they don't like the First Amendment, they should take the first plane to North Korea. For Larry Kreps, I think I might even try to quit the bill. If he would have the courage to do that, a coward would not even testify. What I found really abhorrent was the fact he violated my rights, especially the Fourth Amendment, yet he didn't lie about it. Some of you may say, wait a second. You're criticizing him for not lying? Yes, I am. It was good I didn't have to fight the battle of teasing out the truth with them. But there is something wrong in the fact he would lie. When you lie, it's usually because you're ashamed of something. Something you want to hide. It appears he has no qualms about violating rights. He freely admits to, to violating constitutional rights. I would be ashamed to do that. Most lots of decent people would. 
that Larry Krebs apparently is a decent person because he would not be ashamed doing that. It is a sorry shame. Many on the left criticize, criticize, criticize the government. We do have to remember the great rights we do have. We do have to exalt them, to glorify them in a rally type setting. Also, keep it in mind consciously every day. The blindly patriotic, the hyper nationalists, are willing to give up their free speech rights, free press rights. They pledge allegiance to John Ashcroft, George Bush. They should be pledging allegiance to something more noble, to the Constitution. There are awesome people out there who are willing to fight for the Bill of Rights. They're willing to fight for those noble, unprecedented documents it appears to me, above all else, the greatest virtue of our country is likely the Bill of Rights. Other virtues may not be necessarily common around the world, but they are not unprecedented. For example, our legal rights, the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Great Britain has that right, which I've learned we have adopted from them. They don't have a Bill of Rights the way we do. I am more and more getting determined to fight for those rights. I love to learn about my rights because it empowers me of paramount importance. The right to freedom of speech. I hope that never goes away. I hope I never live in a country where they take that away. Be on the alert. The hyper-nationalists out there are committing a major folly by pledging allegiance to a government which is not in the spirit of 1776. I would like to pinpoint where exactly it went wrong because it is wrong. I want to exalt the virtues that we have. At the same time, being able to not put up, up with any injustice or mediocrity. When you think about it, it is absolutely amazing the Bill of Rights is still there. So many people throughout the years have wanted to do away with rights. Maybe chisel a little bit here and there, maybe do away with it in full. Still there. All the assaults, it's still there. That type of tenacity is something we must exalt. I am appalled when I see people not exercising their rights. 
I am appalled when I see people taking their freedoms for granted. People would rather destroy themselves tabernacles of decadence than exercise their noble rights. Something's very wrong with this. People go into their bars all the time. People don't have the same enthusiasm for rights. Sorry. Shame. In order to preserve freedom of speech, we must say, don't tread on me, officer. Don't tread on me. John Africa said, when you are committed to doing what is right, the power of righteousness will never betray you. When I was put on trial for disorderly conduct. I felt forces of that nature lying up behind me. It seemed to me there was just so much on my side that even though it was incredibly uneven playing field, I was victorious. I had the Bill of Rights on my side. I had the noble cause on my side. I had the law on my side. I had my own qualities on my side. All that added up to power Chris Kane could not defeat. It's not just me. Although I'm very, very proud of how I performed in the courtroom, certainly it's something I can always hold as an amazing trophy I won in court against a prosecutor. I do realize there are other forces that came to work for me during this experience. It's amazing to see the case crumble. First of all, there was no case. It got worse. Increasingly got worse. It was pathetic. Could it be that I have these great forces on my side? I think it might be. I love freedom of speech. I hope you too love freedom of speech. This is why we must say, don't tread on me. Don't tread on me. Don't tread on me. Long live freedom of speech. Long live freedom of speech. Let us forever preserve freedom of speech. Amazing right. And hopefully it will never, ever go away. Good.